So when you see some guy on the net smashing out 3D CAD tutorials, it's natural to think to yourself, hmm, this guy looks like he knows what he's doing and he looks like he knows what kind of PC parts would work best for 3D CAD because his stuff looks a lot smoother than my stuff. So mate, I'd like to know what PC it is you're using. And you're right, I do get that quite a lot. If I look through the comments on a lot of my videos, I get a lot of people asking what PC it is that I'm using. So if you're interested in this video, I'm going to take you through the TFI system. So be prepared for a barrage of ridiculously unnecessarily long model names, codes, numbers and abbreviations. And as much as I'm sure that a lot of you are hoping I'm going to say that I run some kind of super cheap sleeper build with a carefully selected combination of low end components that when all combined the, the heavens open, champagne falls from the skies and velvet robes would part. Sadly that's not the case. In fact, the expression that I'd use to describe the TFI system would be brute force overkill, unnecessary, and balls to the wall. And to that extent, this video is definitely not any kind of nod towards the direction of what is perfect for a 3D CAD workstation build. That's not what this is about. This is simply the system that I use. I'm not gonna get into the debate of i7s versus Xeons or Quadros versus G-Forces in this video. This is simply my home system that I use for a variety of different things, such as filming 3D CAD videos on YouTube, doing video editing via Adobe Creative Cloud, various VR use, uh, and various various bits and pieces. It's just a general home office PC. Now, however, if you go to my back catalog from roughly mid-2014 through to the end of 2017, all TFI videos were recorded using my old build, which was an Intel i7-4790K running at 4.6 GHz. It had the Asus Maximus Ranger 7 motherboard, 32 gig of Corsair Vengeance DDR R3 RAM and then a variety of solid state drives and graphics cards over the years ranging from the G4's 970 through to the 1070 then the Fire Pro W9100 and the 1080 Ti. So any video you saw throughout that time period was recorded on that old build. And then over the years Intel came out with various new CPU architectures, none of which really seemed like good value for what I do and worth the significant cost to upgrade. And then came AMD Ryzen. I bought it and it was absolutely deplorably disappointing. So much so that it now sits in the corner of shame powering my Plex server. Hit dislike if that hurts your feelings, but the proof is right up here in this linked video. Then Intel came out with Coffee Lake and the i7 8700K. Was it rushed? Yeah, but was it in poor supply? Yep but promising the best of the best single core performance and now up to six total cores from the usual four and a solid overclocker if you feel comfortable doing that. I personally decided for me the time was right to jump up a few platforms to the 8700K and all the newer feature sets that opened up. So that was the plan, that's what I did and this is what powers the TFI YouTube channel right now and on into the future. So at the core there is that Intel i7 8700K which although I can probably will push an overclock onto it, currently it's sitting at 4.7 GHz with MCE enabled meaning all six cores are pegged at 4.7 giving me steady reliable temperatures and reducing the potential for any random blue screens of death which have happened during filming and it's mucho not bueno. It's perched snug as a bug in a rug in the ASRock Tai Chi Z370 motherboard which to be honest I chose because it has a whopper muckle big cog for a chipset block because we're working with engineering software here. It's a cog and it's engineering. It seems fitting, am I right? Motherboards are much of a muchness though at this level, so only hardcore overclockers and people pushing the limits really notice or care about the variables between all the boards on a platform, so I do kind of wish that I went for the Asus Maximus Hero board instead, but without blabbering on for half an hour as to the reasons why, I ended up with a Tai Chi and it's doing the job. And then kissing the 8700K with a breath of fresh propylene glycol and distilled water is the NZXT Kraken X62 closed loop liquid cooler with its 280mm radiator hanging 240mm fans. It was chosen carefully and clinically on the merit that it looks badass AF. My RAM is going through a bit of a rough time right now. I explained all this in the video I linked earlier but what I should have is the RGB flavor of G-Skill Trident Z32 gig kit of DDR4 RAM at 3000 megahertz, that being four sticks of eight gigs, but one stick was foo-fighted when it got to me and had to be sent back to G-Skill four weeks ago, and there's still no sign of a replacement. So right now what you're seeing is 24 gig of RAM via three sticks. 
Uh, the storage in my PC is a peach. The operating system, Windows 10, and all my 3D card applications and video editing apps are on the Samsung SM961 512GB NVMe M.2 drive which runs through the PCI Express bus. I have a second solid state drive, an older, slower SATA based drive, that being an OCZ Vertex 4 512GB which holds all my Steam library, games and some other applications on it which could do with being snappy, but I don't need them super regular. And then I also do have a third drive which is a 2 terabyte mechanical drive running at speeds comparable to that of an asthmatic sloth but is used for this just the storage of media files, downloads, media packages, stuff which just needs to be dumped somewhere and never sees the light of day again for yonks. The graphics card, yeah, it says about this, uh, it's the NVIDIA GeForce 1080 Ti Founders Edition. Oh, you noob, you noob, the Founders Edition, who does that? Uh, me. I bought it on day one, ages before any of the third party variants hit the shelves, and I've never had that green glorious GeForce GTX logo of justice shining through the tinted tempered glass before, and sorry not sorry, but I haven't regretted it a single time since, excluding the times when the blower fan belts out near 90 degrees heat into my room when I'm running the HTC Vive. That kinda sucks. The room feels like Sydney during a heat wave even when it's snowing outside, but for the most part I don't care. It looks the tits, and within reasonable variance I get solid 1080 Ti performance out of it nonetheless. And for the power supply, not that it contributes anything to the conversation here is the Corsair AX760i with a couple of questionably rooted cable mod sleeved cables for aesthetic purposes. I swiftly removed the fans on the X62 radiator and replaced them along with the exhaust fan on the case with 340mm Corsair LL fans which are eye-wateringly unreasonably expensive but mate, they flash and stuff and all of the aforementioned gear is packed inside a Fantex Enthu Evolve ATX tempered glass mid-tower case which you've got to admit along with the fake tree and the widescreen 21x9 LG ultrawide monitor makes it all look pretty much exactly like every other YouTuber setup. <laughs> A plus for creativity, right? So I had zero intention of mentioning any of this stuff, but considering I've just shown you a full shot of the desk, I might as well mention the Sony 2.1 soundbar connected to the SP diff, that's the Sony Philips digital interface on the ASRock Tai Chi motherboard. Then there's the Blue Yeti mic on a Rode Swivel boom arm with the Blue Shock mount and pop filter. There's an IKEA Rigger Digger Diggly Dad wireless charging lamp which is never plugged in because I've run out of plug sockets in this not at all a fire hazard studio that I've got here. Then there's the redundant, unused, also no plug socket for you sir, Samsung DeX there for use with my Note 8 phone. Uh, it's redundant because it doesn't support the 21 by 9 aspect ratio of that LG monitor and every application that I hope to use with it, i.e. Fusion 360 mobile app doesn't support DeX and runs in tiny baby pointless unusable windowed mode so it was promptly aborted. There's a 3D connection space mouse enterprise there looking all king of the castle that's comboed with the 3D connection CAD mouse into a dual USB hub behind the monitor and when I can't be chewed to rig up the Panasonic G7 camera uh, onto the tripod fanning about with shotgun mics and whatnot those crappy quality cam shot videos you see is doing are done using that Logitech HD 90 webcam perched on top of the LG 34UC 97 widescreen IPS monitor. Now the keyboard was a razor black widow mechanical keyboard that was until until there was loads of weird pet and wild animal behaviour happening all across the UK and Scotland, birds falling from the trees and the skies, and then a petition reached UK Parliament, Theresa May, based 300 miles away in Downing Street, London, scrambled a cobra meeting to investigate the suspicious yet infuriating ear-piercing high-pitched clicking noises resonating throughout the UK. which they ultimately triangulated to my office and determined the root cause to be the Razer Mechanical Keyboard. So I swapped that out over to this wireless Logitech K800 backlit keyboard, which to be fair, is a keyboard, mate. I press buttons, stuff appears on the screen. Am I any worse off because I now don't have that super tactile pronounced tap, giving me the feeling of assurance that every command is being executed perfectly? No. I still press a button, stuff still appears on the screen, get over yourself. The mouse pad is a 3D connection CAD mouse pad which they say is engineered to perfectly complement the contact of the CAD mouse and I'm calling BS on that, I think it was a pure coincidence that it's turned out to be actually as good as it is. Seriously, it's a flawless glide and I'm personally never using any other mouse pad again unless this one tears up and they stop selling it, it's delightful. On top of the PC is a relic of the past, what is but an ornament, symbolising everything that went wrong but yet others took forward and went on to greatness with the Xbox Kinect uh, sitting there unplugged because it 
just being in idle mode, it completely balked up my HTC Vive, filling the room with IR waves. And then there's the obligatory fake potted plant, I called him Jordan, uh, and a lovely glass plaque awarded to me by Autodesk for being awesome. Read that'll do it, there's much, much, much more stuff here, like a Ryzen 7 system uh, along with the dual Xeon 12 core Dell Precision Workstation in the corner, but this is getting kind of ridiculous now. Yes, I am well aware I appear to be showing the signs of uh, hoarding, but what are you going to do? That's the TFI setup for 2017 moving on into 2018. Uh, that's what I use for recording all 3D CAD content for the channel and for editing. And as I said at the very start, I ain't going to get into the argument of what optimal part selection for 3D CAD is because I've done that to death already and each discussion on its own uh, it needs a video uh, to, to kind of warrant each topic. But yeah, that's what I've got. Does the job pretty damn well too. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all in the next one. Toodles.